Welcome back to part two of this Blender series. If you haven't followed part one, uh, the link is in the description below. So we're at the part where we can add our own colors and put a bit of personality into our headphones. So I recommend you doing your own thing, but of course you can follow me if you really want to. So let's start off by selecting our main body of the headphones and clicking new. And it's just a principle BSDF so far, but let's change the base color. I'm going to turn it to this lovely blue color. Uh, you can do whatever you want, of course. And I turned the roughness quite high. But in my last render, um, I used this setup. It probably isn't ideal. I'm not entirely sure um, if this is like realistic or whatever. But this is how I did it. And it did turn out quite good. So I added in a mix shader and a glossy shader. Like so. Uh, I turned the glossy down to a grayish blue and then I added in a layer weights node. This is a quite a cool node that has effects that I can't really explain. I might put some stuff on screen to show you what it does, but it's quite useful and yeah, I think people should use it more. So th this is the effect that the layer weights node gives. I'm using the uh, Fresnel and you can toggle it however you want. So I'll name this to main, add in a new material and call it secondary. And this is going to be for the inside cushion. And I can turn it into this very subtle cream color. And uh, hmm. for the subtle cream color, I'm going to um, turn down the roughness, make it slightly shinier, maybe point uh, four. And I'm going to turn up the clear coats to maybe a point six. Okay, maybe that's a bit too much. Point, point three is fine. Okay, so now I'm going to do this metallic part. I'm going to make it like a very nice gold. So I'm going to press three to go to, to face select and press control plus to get the top and bottom bits. Add in another new material. I'm going to name it metal. I think it's good practice to name your stuff and be quite organized. Make sure you hit assign. We'll we'll sort this out in a minute. Don't worry. Turn the metallic to one, I guess. Add in a mix shader. And go find yourself a glossy shader. Okay, that looks good. Uh, to get rid of this uh, weird effect here, we're going to have to add in edge loops. And that just squashes them in. Okay. And let me add that to uh, my little logo down here. Okay, so final thing to do is the actual ear cushions. Um, I'm going to make it into this nice leathery material. It's quite taxing on the computer uh, with a few bump notes, but I'll show you how I did it. It's quite heavily inspired from Ducky 3D. To assign the new material onto the headphones, first what we're going to do is go into face select and select the most interface of the headphone earpiece. And then we're going to use the uh, function control plus, which expands our selection. And we're going to keep pressing that until we've got the whole selection like so. Once we've done this, we can add a new material and assign it to this selection in edit mode. So this next part where we're actually making the leather can be quite taxing on the computer, uh, especially if you're using a laptop or something not too powerful. But there are a few ways around it. First of all, you can just leave the material as is. I think it still looks quite good. Second of all, you can copy my notes, but just don't use a bump note or any of those stuff. And it will be slightly taxing, but not too crazy. And it will be it will still look quite good. And finally, if your computer is quite good, you can just copy everything I do 
and you can put all the bump nodes in and be completely fine with it. So I'll show you all of my nodes and then you can choose what level you want to do it for. So these are the finalized nodes for the leather. Um, this is the highest level where we have the bump and also we have the roughness uh, being manipulated by these nodes. However, if you again don't have a powerful laptop or computer, uh, these aren't necessary. So I'll hide them here, the ones that you don't need. So um, the main ones that you're gonna want to have is first of all, the principal BSDF. Uh, connected to your color ramp, which will eat, um, which will affect how your um, headphones look, and you can change it to whatever color scheme you want. Uh, two Voronoi textures. The values I have for the Voronoi texture is scale, uh, sixteen smoothness one and randomness one for both of them, and a mapping node just so um, Blender knows how to control the look of it. A texture coordinate at the very end, and in between that is going to be a noise texture. And then both of these are going into a mix RGB, not a mix shader, but mix RGB. So you can see the difference here. And the noise texture is at the top, texture coordinate at the bottom. And they go into this mapping node right here. So that's the most basic one. And for the higher level ones, you've got your noise texture and into your color ramp to control the roughness. That's how shiny or glossy it looks. And then for the bump, you've got your bump nodes and your color ramp to adjust the height. So that's it for the nodes. And we're going to move on to lighting and shading now. Okay, so with all the materials done, all we need to do is some lighting and setup. And then we can go into compositing and then the tutorial is done. So back in layout mode, I'm going to add in my camera. Press Alt-R. Whoops. Okay, Alt-R. Bring it back on the Y axis and press R, X, minus 90. Okay, never mind, just regular 90. And go into camera view, press G, Y, bring it back a bit. And let me rotate my headphones. But first, before I do that, I need to apply the modifiers to uh, the text, and I'm gonna parent it to uh, the headphones so that they all move together. So I'm gonna go back into camera view, um, that's not good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me apply my mirror modifier and all, let me apply all the stuff to the secondary part here and parent it to the main body. And I'm going to apply my mirror modifier to the headphones, but not the subdivision surface. So now everything moves together. So let's rotate it for like a cool type of I don't know, just, you know, cool angle, position, whatever you want. Let's make sure it's centered. So for the camera, viewport display, and I'm going to put on limits just to see where the center is. It doesn't need to be dead center, but it would be, you know, ideal. Okay. Um, let me go to renders view. Uh, no lighting, no nothing. So it looks, it looks awful. But before we do anything, I'm going to put ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, all that good stuff. And now I'm going to add in a plane so that there's something behind the headphones. I'm going to go into camera view and rotate it along the X axis, scale it up and scale it on so that it, co it covers everything. Okay, so we need a source of light and I'm going to add in a an area lamp. 
and I'm going to position it just like so. Uh, I don't have exact measurements if you guys were hoping, but you can just follow along or do your own thing. But I can guide you kind of. Okay. And I want it to kind of focus on the logo on the headphones. And let me make this way bigger. I don't know too much about lighting, but you know, sometimes you can work it out with a bit of trial and error. Let's go into edit mode or rendered mode and it looks bland. Okay, that's better. That's much better. Okay, yeah. So before we do any more lighting, it would be good to add in a HDRI. Um, I'm going to add in the same one I used for my watch tutorial. So let me add environment texture. Again, I got it from HDRI Haven, so I will put it in the description below. Um, okay, so the HDRI is added and I'm changing the strength just down a little bit. And the lighting is quite a bit better, so we can actually see it. Let me, let me turn it down a bit. For the background, I add a cool like split between colors. So how I did this was I tab into edit mode, press K for knife tool and just bisect the entire thing. And then we can add in two different materials for the background. So go into object mode, new, very simple materials. I did one blue. Uh, and one like silver, I think. So blue backgrounds, silver background. And for the silver one, I turned the metallic up, I think. And maybe for the blue one, it can be matte. We'll see, turn roughness all the way up. Okay, yeah, that looks good. So the lighting still needs some work and we need some highlights. We need some stuff. So for the next like few minutes, I'm all over the place trying to explain the lighting and to be honest, it's not very good. So allow me, future Tammy, the more wise and knowledgeable, you know, blender user to explain my lighting process in the most optimal of ways. So allow me to bring you back to the shading tab. And let's go to the world settings. And as you can see, um, I changed the angle of rotation for my HDRI. And the HDRI was the most important factor when it came to lighting. So I could put as many area lamps as I want, uh, change the size of them, but it wouldn't make as big as, of an impact as the HDRI's position. So um, it might be different depending on how you set yours up, but... Um, you can rotate your HDRI, especially on the Z axis. I think that's the best way to rotate it. Um, rotate along the Z axis and uh, basically you can get better lighting effects. And the biggest problem for me was that the HDRI was focused on all of the scene instead of just a single section of it. So when everything's lit up, it doesn't make it look as good. So it was better to have some nice contrast. And as you can see, as I'm doing here, my logo is shining even brighter, which is perfect and exactly what we want for this type of lighting setup. So if we go back to layout and I'll just go back into solid view, I've just got one uh, lamp highlighting the uh, closer um, metallic ring around the headphones and it's only 300 watts. So that's the basic lighting setup. It's quite easy and um, I think this is much better. And for the camera, it's 50 millimeters and it's just set at a position where it kind of encompasses the whole scene uh, just about not too much negative space at the top and bottom so i think uh, this is pretty much the optimal position so with the lighting done you can finally go into render render image and we can move on to compositing so this is how the render looks without uh, compositing uh, like i've said before you can stop here if you want but compositing makes it look so much better so i'll show you how to do it right now so in the compositing tab, we're going to want to check use nodes. Uh, bring this over here. And if you have node wrangler enabled, you can press control shift and you've got your viewer. So let me change this zoom. So that's smaller. A uh, few things that I add. Lens distortion. 
one of my favorites. Gotta have some chromatic aberration. Add a color balance just in case I need to tweak some of the colors. And I'm gonna add in a glare node as well. And I'm gonna add in a filter and a soften. I have no idea what this does, but um, I've seen other people use it. So I was like, yeah, why not? And make sure you're pressing control shift to click every time so that you know what's happening. Uh, this is what happens when you add too much chromatic aberration. So I'm gonna change that, make it quite a bit smaller. Oh, whoops, 0.03, maybe. Maybe a bit more. Okay. And I'm gonna change it from streaks to fog glow. I'm gonna bring the mix slightly higher. That makes everything darker, but what is being glared These are the final notes for the compositing. As you can see, um, all of the ones I stated here and then I added an ellipse mask and a blur. This doesn't do too much. I, I just usually add it just from a compulsion. It's to produce a vignette effect to darken the edges. You can see it just slightly. Um, it's not too necessary, but I just add it in regardless. But those are all of the notes and that's it for the compositing. Okay, so that's it for everything. Once you're happy with all of your compositing nodes, make sure you re-render the whole scene and save that image to your desktop. So hopefully you've made this nice looking render like mine, uh, hopefully with a nice spin on it. Uh, I did a few variations uh, on this myself. So hopefully you've made something that's kind of unique and special to you. And I would love to see it. So if you've actually followed this tutorial, uh, it would be cool if you actually sent it to me at oluwa.tami, a link in the description. But that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you want to see more, hit subscribe because I'm planning to produce different types of Blender videos, not just tutorials, but, you know, more creative stuff. So a huge thank you to anyone who actually followed through with this tutorial. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.